May 2, 2024, News Report 1. The government of Meizhou City, Guangdong Province, held a press conference in the afternoon of May 2 to report on the collapse of the Meilong Expressway. Local officials stated that the accident had resulted in 48 deaths and 30 injuries, with the situation being extremely serious. Ma Zhenyong, the secretary of the Meizhou Municipal Committee, reported that a total of 23 vehicles were buried in the collapsed pit, and the identities of three deceased individuals are still awaiting confirmation through DNA testing. The total number of passengers trapped at the scene is 78, with some vehicles buried in soil, and rescue teams are working to locate them. According to Tsai Xin, on the morning of May 2, a collapse occurred on the Meilong Expressway causing a shocking scene. Among the buried vehicles were burnt-out car wrecks, and the scene was filled with the smell of burnt materials. Meizhou's emergency department stated that some vehicles were buried in soil, and due to the softness of the soil, large-scale rescue equipment had difficulty entering the site. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Keqiang issued instructions regarding the incident, and Huang Kunming, Secretary of the Guangdong Provincial Party Committee, and Governor Wang Weizhong visited the scene to mourn the deceased. The preliminary cause of the accident has been identified as substandard construction, with the roadbed being unstable and affected by continuous rainfall. According to the Ministry of Transport's road design specifications, the normal public condition coefficient for highways is between 1.2 and 1.3, while the coefficient for non-normal public conditions is between 1.1 and 1.2. Continuous rainfall has caused changes in the fill areas and original landforms, exacerbating the instability of the slopes, ultimately leading to the collapse. The Meilong Expressway also known as the Meida Expressway, is an important artery connecting Meixian District in Meizhou City to Chaoyang Town on the Fujian border. It is 61.3 kilometers long, with four lanes in each direction, a design speed of 100 kilometers per hour, and a total investment of 5.6 billion yuan. The proportion of bridges and tunnels on this section of the road reaches 51%, the highest among mountain expressways in Guangdong Province. During construction, several accidents occurred, including a major collapse on April 1 last year, which resulted in a halt in both directions of traffic for over a month. One week before the accident, Kai Chonghua, the chairman of the Guangdong Traffic Industry Investment Company, the controlling shareholder of the Dachau Expressway, led a management team to conduct an inspection, requesting preparations for flood prevention work and conducting stability and safety inspections on key structures such as slopes, bridges, and tunnels. However, after the accident, questions were raised about the insufficient monitoring and warning systems. News Report 2 Agents France Presa reported that on May 2, the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs summoned Chinese charged affair Zhou Ziyong to protest against China's use of water cannons to attack Philippine ships near Huangyan Island on April 30. The Philippines accused Chinese ships of dangerous actions, including ramming, encirclement, and blocking of Philippine vessels, and demanded that Chinese ships immediately leave Huangyan Island. This is the 20th diplomatic protest against China by the Philippines since 2024 and the 153rd since President Marcos took office. The Philippine government stated that on April 30, Chinese Coast Guard ships raised the water cannon pressure, causing metal parts and equipment on Philippine vessels to be torn and bent. The Philippines expressed concerns about ongoing territorial disputes with China, including disputes over the Diaoyu Islands with Japan, and the South China Sea with the Philippines and Vietnam. Japan has begun to increase military spending and is preparing to amend its pacifist constitution to return to being a normal state. In order to strengthen measures against China, the Philippines has opened five military bases to the United States. The United States has deployed medium-range missiles in northern Luzon Island, covering the entire South China Sea, strengthening its blockade against China. Analysts point out that if China continues its behavior, it will bring uncertainty to the entire Southeast Asia region, which is a very unwise strategic move. News Report 3 
The Mexican government issued a decree on April 22 imposing temporary tariffs of up to 50% on 544 products including steel, textiles, and electrical materials. Tariffs are a commonly used trade measure adopted by countries to defend against dumping of goods from other countries. This is in line with the non-tariff barrier rules managed by the World Trade Organization. This tariff law affects two aspects. First, Mexico believes that 85% of Chinese exports to Mexico are dumped and require tariffs. There is a significant trade deficit between Mexico and China. In 2023, for every $1 of goods Mexico exported to China, China exported $11.40 worth of goods to Mexico. Mexico's trade deficit with China reached $100 billion at the end of last year. For example, last year, China exported 60 million pairs of shoes to Mexico, sparking protests from Mexico's shoe industry. Second, this tariff measure also affects Chinese goods entering the U.S. market through Mexico. The U.S. government announced on April 17 trade measures against China, including pressuring Mexico to ban Chinese goods from passing through to avoid tariffs. Mexico's revision of tariffs is partly in response to U.S. concerns. News Report 4 EU Trade Commissioner Dombrovskis told Politico in an interview that the EU may impose tariffs on Chinese electric cars before the summer vacation. In October last year, the European Commission initiated an anti-subsidy investigation against Chinese electric cars, alleging that the Chinese government provides massive subsidies to electric cars, artificially lowering prices and harming the interests of European manufacturers. The deadline for the anti-subsidy investigation is September, and the EU will make a ruling on whether to increase tariffs by July 4. Increasing tariffs or quotas are temporary measures. This move has made the situation increasingly difficult for Chinese electric cars. Unable to enter the EU market, the EU is now considering imposing tariffs. If the US and Europe, the two main markets, close their doors to China in the future, the space for Chinese electric car exports will be further limited, and the prospects will be even more grim. News Report 5 U.S. Secretary of State Blinken issued a statement on May 1, strongly supporting Taiwan's participation in this year's World Health Assembly as an observer. This is the first time the United States has publicly supported Taiwan's participation in the assembly. The World Health Assembly will be held in Geneva, Switzerland on May 5, but Taiwan has not yet received an invitation. Taiwan withdrew from the United Nations in 1971, and consequently, from the World Health Organization under the UN. Since 2009, Taiwan has been invited to participate in the World Health Assembly as an observer. However, since the Kuomintang lost the election in 2016, Taiwan has been excluded and unable to participate in the WHO meetings due to obstruction from China. In recent years, more and more countries have openly supported Taiwan's participation in the World Health Assembly, especially after Taiwan's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Blinken stated that Taiwan has repeatedly demonstrated its ability to help solve global health crises and its ability and willingness to support the global health community. Excluding Taiwan undermines global public health cooperation and undermines the purpose of the WHO. However, Taiwan's Minister of Foreign Affairs Joseph Wu stated on May 2 that it may be difficult to participate in the World Health Assembly this year, and efforts are still being made to garner more support from other countries. News Report 6 On May 2, Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council revised the announcement prohibiting Taiwanese people from holding positions in the Chinese Communist Party, government, military, and public office, effective immediately. This is the first revision of the announcement in 20 years, and it now prohibits Taiwanese people from holding public office in over 100 Chinese Communist Party, government, and military organizations. These organizations include eight democratic parties, the Association for Relations Across the Taiwan Straits, the Taipei Liaison Office, the Youth League, and Confucius Institutes. 
The Mainland Affairs Council pointed out that Taiwanese people holding public office in these organizations could face fines of up to 500,000 new Taiwan dollars. If public officials go to work in these organizations, they may also face criminal charges. News Report 7 on May 2, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute published a report titled The Truth and Reality of China's Characteristics. The report summarizes the relationship network between Chinese business institutions and the Chinese propaganda system and points out that the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda system uses technologies such as national investment, artificial intelligence, and mobile games to shape and distort people's perceptions of reality. The report states that the purpose of the CCP's cognitive warfare is to control and shape the world's view of China, strengthen the legitimacy of China's various activities, and enhance China's influence in various aspects globally. The report emphasizes that the CCP completely controls the domestic information environment while also working to expand its international influence. News Report 8 France's TV2 broadcasted a program on May 2 documenting the entire process of Chinese dissident Lin Huazhan being summoned, pressured, and repatriated by China's overseas police force. The program confirmed the existence of China's overseas police forces and their cross-border repression of Chinese people. Lin Huazhan, 26, resides in France. He uploaded a video on YouTube showing him tearing portraits of Mao Zedong and Xi Jinping in a bathroom. Due to this video, Lin Huazhan was summoned to the China Visits Room in Paris. After the summons, Lin Huazhan was escorted to Charles de Gaulle Airport by members of the Sino-French Friendship Association to await repatriation to China. Lin Huazhan later managed to escape and received dozens of threatening phone calls and messages. Human Rights Watch revealed in 2023 that the Chinese government has established 110 overseas police offices globally, with four in France. From 2014 to 2022, China used these overseas police offices to repatriate over 10,000 Chinese nationals. China has always denied the existence of these overseas police offices, but the program on France's TV2 proves that China has been lying. News Report 9 Dalian Maritime Safety Administration issued a navigation warning, stating that there will be live-fire exercises in the northern part of the Yellow Sea from 11 o'clock on May 6 to 1400 hours on May 8, prohibiting ships from entering. The Yellow Sea is the Junction Sea area of China, South Korea, and North Korea. This exercise is the third time within a month that the Dalian Maritime Safety Administration has announced live-fire exercises in the Yellow Sea. The previous two times were from April 7 to 11 and from April 22 to 26. Although the US, Japan, and South Korea have conducted joint military exercises in the Yellow Sea in the past, China also conducts its own exercises in the area. It is worth noting that the East China Sea is south of the Yellow Sea. The US, Japan, and South Korea conducted joint exercises in the East China Sea on April 11 and 12, while China conducted live-fire exercises in the Yellow Sea at this time, which may have political significance. News Report 10 Nanjing City and Wuxi City in Jiangsu Province, as well as Zhongshan City in Guangdong Province, have successively issued policies to relax support for home purchases. Nanjing City has introduced nine measures for mutual recognition and mutual loans of Urban Housing Provident Fund, including Changzhou, Zhenjiang, Yangzhou, Huayan, Wuhu, Maianshan, and Chuzhou within the Nanjing metropolitan area. In addition, Nanjing City issued a notice on April 26 to further relax the conditions for settlement, allowing people with stable residence to apply for settlement, which means that the spouses, children, and parents of homebuyers can all settle in Nanjing. Wuxi City, Jiangsu Province, has introduced a talent housing guarantee policy, providing subsidies or housing vouchers of 50,000 to 5 million renminbi for bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Zhongshan City, Guangdong Province, has introduced a policy of exchanging old for new, providing 2,000 electronic consumption vouchers as subsidies. 
These local governments hope to release this good news during the May Day holiday to help digest the inventory in the real estate market. News Report 11 The proportion of self-driving tours during the May Day holiday is very high. It is reported that more than 100 million people are self-driving on the roads. The Ministry of Transport predicts that the number of mobile population during the May Day period will reach 270 million, with over 80% choosing to self-drive. This has led to severe congestion on highways, with some netizens saying they have been on the road for five hours and still haven't left Shanghai. At the same time, electric vehicles are also affected, with charging becoming a major issue. The report mentioned a car owner queuing for an hour to charge at a service area, while some people even queued for three hours. Problems such as difficulty in charging and insufficient charging facilities have always plagued electric vehicle users, especially during peak periods such as holidays. News Report 12 Reuters reported that the yen rose from 158 to 153 during the New York session on May 1. The market estimates that the Bank of Japan is conducting market intervention, and on May 2, during the Asian session, the yen maintained at 156. According to reports, during the last hour of trading on May 1 in New York, there were more than US$4 billion US dollars worth of futures contracts traded, setting a record high since February this year. This is seen as evidence of the Bank of Japan's intervention in the yen. Bloomberg reported that on April 29, the yen exchange rate fell to 160, and the Bank of Japan used 34.8 billion US dollars to intervene, pushing the exchange rate to 155. The Japanese side has not yet commented on whether there has been market intervention. News Report 13 Asahi Shimbun reported that there was a significant increase in Chinese tourists visiting Japan during the May Day holiday. They have unleashed a shopping frenzy in Japan. According to the data from Kyocera Network, the May Day holiday is the first choice for Chinese people to travel abroad, and Japan is their most enthusiastic destination. Asahi TV reported that Chinese tourists believe that the yen is depreciating, so they choose to shop and enjoy food in Japan. In 2020, one Chinese yuan exchanged for 14 Japanese yen, but now one Chinese yuan exchanges for 22 Japanese yen. In Ginza, Tokyo, Chinese tourists queued to enter luxury stores, and the streets were full of them carrying shopping bags, with a high rate of bag carrying. The bag carrying rate of luxury stores in Ginza is also high. Seafood restaurants are also crowded with Chinese tourists, with the restaurant manager saying that there are 400 reservations per day, including 100 Chinese tourists. News Report 14 Hong Kong singer Wan Minan, who supports the anti-extradition movement, announced on Facebook on May 1 that he and his family have safely arrived in the UK. Ruan Minan was sentenced to 26 months in prison last August for participating in the anti-extradition movement and was released at the end of September last year. He said he spent a long time in prison. Ruan Minan also revealed that when he was released, two national security police officers approached him, trying to arrange for him to go to China for development and give propaganda lectures. These two police officers told him that the government's surveillance and intervention against him was because he supported the anti-extradition movement in 2019. After his release, the National Security Police continuously called, texted, and tracked him, trying to persuade him. Ruan Minan also described an experience of being escorted by police to a vehicle with sealed windows. He said that he is now in the UK and will continue to speak out for the people of Hong Kong.